Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, cast. Welcome to. I forgot the setup number, what it is. But here we are at Zandvoort for the Dutch GP in the Netherlands. A lot of names that you can use for this track. Uh, very quickly, uh, thank you to all channel members as well and all the subscribers for bringing us where we are so far. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment if you like this or maybe if you liked any improvement. Let me know in the comment section. Join the Discord as well if you love to keep in touch with the community. And now let's get into the slow mo hot lap, and followed by the setup after that. And finally, we'll have the full speed lap at the end. So, to start off your lap in Zenbot, pretty much like any other track, you need to make sure your final corner exit is well correct, <laughs> right? Um, so right after the 50 break and then use as much curve as possible you can use quite a bit this year and uh, the car is going to be porpoising a little bit but now cross the start finish line heading into turn one right after the 100 meter mark right after the black box there's a little patch of grass uh, white sand there that's where i like to break around 75 meters and then tuck the car in tight um i could have downshifted to third gear here noticing now that will allow me to get a little bit more rotation and pick up the throttle earlier so you can do that as well the sooner you pick up the throttle you know the more time you can gain on the exit and let the car run wide on the exit here use a lot of the curb but make sure you don't use too much i find that putting half your car on the curb like this just nice and now heading into the twisty part of sector one right before the curb ends that's your turning in point you can downshift and lift a little bit do not mount the curb, but you can just graze it a little bit. And now, make sure you straighten out the car. The moment your car is straight, right as the curb is about to end on the left hand side, that's where you want to be braking. And down to third gear for the apex. Stay tight on the inside line, unlike real life. So you have to take the tight line to be quick around here. And uh, I did sort of a V shape here. You can do also U shape exit whichever works for you but i lost a little bit of time anyway keep a straightest line and now down to turn seven sector one ends here you have three braking references the black box the qatar airways or that orange mark or that little exit route on the left use whichever is comfortable for you and keep it flat around here in qualifying in the race it's just going to be a little bit of lift and a downshift and you can make this through very easily without losing any time there you go, flat out. And again, curb usage is quite important. And as the curb ends here on the left hand side, that's is that's where gonna be your turning in point. And uh, you may need to downshift to six, maybe fifth in the race, and uh, a little bit of lift for confidence here. And you can take quite a bit of the curb to get a title entry and get a wider exit. Speaking of the exit, do not use too much of it. And right around this 70, 60 meter mark, that's where I like to break and uh, aim for the apex here. And on the exit, by this point, you should be already flat out once again. And bring your car over to the right hand side to open up this left hander before they short DR straight. 50 meter board or that blue toilet, whichever you want to use as your reference. That's where you're going to be using as your braking reference and just a light tap on the brakes just to get the nose turned in into the apex here maybe down to third maybe fourth gear and on the exit again be aggressive with the curb usage but not too much half a car is just nice around here otherwise you can bottom out quite easily drs open and now bring the car to the left hand side and prepare to brake right at this curb here as the curb's about to start brake in a straight line down to third gear and take as much curb as possible um, which is about to come on this right hand side there you go take it all you want and uh, once you take this with a good right height you can nail this next left hander as well stay tight again to maximize the corner speed that you can carry down to second gear or third gear and on the exit up to third up to fourth again and uh, be careful of the curb usage once again here half a car just fine more than that you are risking yourself in danger and now the final corner here pretty much makes or breaks your lap time right after the 50 meter braking mark or that black box on the top left which i kind of skipped 
that's where you're gonna be lifting a little bit and downshift to fifth there you go drs open and stay tight if you get a good exit there you go you can gain lots of time here in my previous attempt definitely lost a lot of time by going too wide onto that exit curb and there you go that is a quick track guide around sanford quite a tricky track to nail there's a lot of lap time here because there's a lot of high speed corners you have to carry momentum from one corner to another so that's definitely some getting used to be required there and with that done um yeah let's get into the juicy part of the day which is going to be the setups very quickly if you would love to see any other setups the link is in the description or in the top right you can find all the other setups for well all the tracks only few are out just now <laughs> okay so let's get into the setup real quick maximum downforce as much as you can 50 42 wings you can use a little bit higher rear wing about 43 44 if you need a bit more confidence i find the wing gap of 8 is just nice for me so far in most tracks and followed by the transmission which is 100 on throttle 10 percent off throttle to give me a lot of rotation under the braking you can use 20 or 30 for the race and 100 percent engine braking allows your car to stop much quicker and you can also regenerate more ers so a win-win situation here and then we move on to the suspension geometry which uh, as usual it's going to be left 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 everything minimum gives you the most amount of rotation and grip through all the corners no no, no changes about it 95 percent of the time you want to be using this throughout all corners all tracks and now let's move on to the suspension which uh, we have a little bit of a tweak a little bit of a different trend compared to the other tracks zenward is quite bumpy naturally so i gone for a very stiff front suspension it's the same as any other track 41 and with the 22 right height it's just enough right uh, any lower and the car really feels like a little wobbly and on the rear you want it low so that it gives you confidence in those high speed corners and also in the low speed corners you get a lot more traction uh, and to make it work i've actually used 15 on the rear suspension it's quite a bit stiffer than what i usually run but i find it really really nice feeling in sandvoort um, you know because it's quite bumpy you don't want the spring to be too soft or too stiff either so you need it a little bit stiff so that it absorbs the bumps at the same time it doesn't bottom out the car uh, weird mechanics but there you go if you want the car to be a little bit safer you can run 25 55 right hand or even 60 on the rear um, if you need a bit more safety net and moving on to the anti-roll bars 21 16 is what i use i started off with 21 15 like my preset setup uh, on the top right in my setup explain video if you feel like the car is understeering on the exit you can drop the front anti-roll bar one or two clicks that's all if you need rear stability drop the rear anti-roll bar just one or two more clicks and you'll be fine and that's pretty much about it for suspension and let's move on to the next part which is going to be uh, oh before i forgot yeah you can increase the rear roll bar as well if you need more rotation right and now actually we move on to the brakes 100 percent brake pressure and about 54 brake bias for most corners here you can go down to 53 for some high speed corners where you just need to tap the brakes get a bit more rotation heavier braking you can use 55 like turn one or the last chicane and finally tire pressures maximum tire pressures for the race that should help you to preserve your tire temperatures a bit more so it gets cooler much quicker for the qualifying you can drop the tire pressures a little bit by maybe one or two psi to give you a lot more contact patch and a lot more grip same thing for the race you can actually drop it a little bit if you need a little bit more grip and you do not overheat the tires thank you so so much for watching up until now I hope you enjoyed the track guide and the setup as well the explanation if you need any help leave it in the comments i will entertain that as soon as possible once i'm up um, on the next day and there you go hopefully you enjoyed the full speed hot lap and i'll see you in the next track guide which is going to be for monza next week <coughs> excuse me till then take care everyone stay safe and goodbye